What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video once again we are back for the my team journey episode number nine for the Canadian Grand Prix please have a like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying this series I certainly am it has been uh, certainly a change up to the normal formula of us being slow and struggling we've hit the ground running with this team it's been absolutely unbelievable so let's see if we can keep up this this flow of momentum we've got a podium in the last race a podium which is absolutely nuts uh and and monaco do i even need to talk about monaco surely you guys have seen that episode that was uh beyond belief that one but uh yeah canada this again should be a, a strong track for us power track we've got the best engine in the field we are lacking in terms of chassis so weight reduction i think will be huge let's target that for a future upgrade and uh hopefully we can have a bit more of a, a well-balanced car but speaking of the car the car handles amazingly um it it feels better than like uh an F122 Season 2, Season 3 My Team car. We're only in Season 1. It, it is amazing, and it's allowing me to have confidence to push and to be great, and I expect more greatness as we head into the Canadian Grand Prix after the 70 laps I did around here in Creator Series last week. Meanwhile, I have to fire this guy. Thanks. I know these kinds of decisions can be challenging, but... I think you made the right call. I certainly did indeed. We gotta do what we gotta do. Especially when there's team acclaim on the line. I I need to get this team to team acclaim level 10. Whoa, that was some big boy upgrades. We just had go on the car. That was two downforce upgrades. That was a DRS upgrade and a front downforce upgrade, I believe. And now we're chucking on an IC durability upgrade, which we absolutely need, uh, given how bad our reliability has been. Same too with the longevity of just our power units. That's not what we wanted, an engine failure, not, oh wow, an engine upgrade failure heading into this race. That would have been a nice boost of engine power heading into the Canadian Grand Prix. We very nearly had a rocket ship on our hands. We're already the best engine in the field, uh, but that extra power is going to have to wait for a few more rounds, I would have to say. We don't have the resource points to work on that today, unfortunately. Facility-wise... We've got an awkward amount of money, really. We've got enough to do some, like, low-level stuff, like, for the in the... Ah, uh, what am I talking about? Like, simulator stuff, pit crew. No, we've done pit crew, even though we, we're still getting bad um, pit stops from the team. We love that. Personnel upgrades. We could do some small personnel stuff, but we can't do uh, the big stuff that's going to push us to spec level 2 uh, on that side of things. So that's a bit frustrating. So we're going to wait until we get about 3 mil, and I think I'm going to work on the marketing of this team to hopefully mean that we progress in terms of a claim quicker, so we can earn money quicker, and really challenge these big boys on the daily. Uh, anyway, here is the update. Oh, there was the update. <laughs> it was uh, big gains from McLaren, Aston Martin, and Red Bull, who stand tall as the best team in Formula 1 at this stage. Not exactly getting the results are Red Bull at the moment. They're letting Ferrari, uh, both of their drivers... I guess in the team's championship as well, kind of run away uh, with all the points at this stage. But Red Bull, all the resources are not really uh, doing anything with it, it seems. Friday practice program's done for us. Uh, we got about 1,500 resource points. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to repurchase this uh, engine power upgrade, which was meant to be on for today. We'll have to wait until the Austrian Grand Prix, which is frustrating pushes us further back unfortunately because we don't have uh fabrication upgrade level one we can't do two upgrades at the same time for the engine so we are log jammed on that side where are we going to put our facilities our resources probably durability going forward uh we've got some uh facility departments just sitting idly by uh not able to do anything because we haven't had the resource points in the past and uh yeah we're just we're just waiting for upgrades to go on so we really need to up the money in this team to get uh the fabrication department to make multiple parts within a specific department it's really frustrating at the early stage but uh going back to our engine components we said they were a bit mudded and uh they truly are two engines are pretty much in the mud not usable for a race weekend we're gonna have to take about two maybe three engines this this season uh start of the back and and take those even with our durability upgrades that we will make going forward so uh look forward to that in future episodes of this season we will be starting from the back at some point but that won't be today. Time for qualifying. 
for the Canadian Grand Prix. All right then, time for qualifying for Canada. It is uh, interchangeable conditions at this stage. It is currently damp or quite wet, I would say, but people are out there on soft compound tires. It makes absolutely no sense. Liam goes P1 uh, at the early stage of qualifying. Stop the count. Marduk Motorsport is on top and it's not me. But uh, we waited literally till the end of the session because the track was only ramping up. It was only drying further and further. I don't think, I don't think there's going to be any expected rain for the rest of today. So um, anyone who did a run earlier on in the session was just wasting their tires. But yo, again, we improved by 12 seconds just casually. Um, yes, definitely a glitch. It was only a one-tenth improvement on our second lap. One minute, 10.6, puts us, puts us P10. Unfortunately, again, Liam missing those final three or four tenths and uh, doesn't progress in qualifying. 18th place, four tenths off me, and uh, back to the drawing board for the Kiwi once again. Onto a new set of tires for us then in Q2. Or shall, shall we save those sets of tires for the race? Let's go out on the banker run. I actually think we should save two brand new sets of softs for the race. And I'm already thinking thinking ahead on, in terms of strategy because of what happened in Creator Series. Creator Series was a dominant two-stop race. Yes, it was a 100% race, but the tire wear was, was, is halved. Here, it's it's uh, it's double the tire wear of a 100% race. So, in theory, if a two-stop works in a 100% race, there's a, a, a solid chance it might work in, in this race, in a 50% race. It's a very short run through the pit lane. So uh, I think a two-stop might very well work, even under green flag conditions. So we do our banker on the used set of tires we used in Q1, and we are going to save those two sets for the race, and we're going to accept where we qualify. Unfortunately, everyone improved, and we end up in 16th place in Q2. But this is Canada. It's a power circuit. DRS zones everywhere. It's not going to be too hard to overtake cars in the race. Um, so... Let's think about the bigger picture here, guys. You might think it's a bottle, but let me cook. I've got a big strategy coming. Let's see how it plays out. Here in Montreal, Lights Out is quickly approaching on this artificial island originally built for the World Fair in 1967. Now it's used for a World's Fair of a different kind ever since Formula One first arrived here. We're back in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Hamilton, Hulkenberg, Joe, Verstappen, Bottas, Benjamin, Magnussen, Liam Lawson, Gasly, De Vries, Sargent, Ocon, Sargent. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Alongside me to discuss all the action today is Natalie Pinker. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. And tell me, you were down in the pit lane earlier. How do you think the track conditions are today? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So, with the cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. So here we are then for Canada. We are on the grid and actually up a place, 15th to start this one. Uh, we had a grid penalty for someone down the order and I can't even remember who it was. So we're going to move on swiftly from that. As promised uh, in qualifying, we sacrificed our grid position to score big points in the race. And uh, to do that, I think two stop is the way to go. Works 100% race. Yes, there are less laps to uh, pull off the new tyre strat 
doing the extra pit stop, but I think I've got I've, I've got faith in myself. I'm going to back myself to try and do something crazy here. Uh, it's going to be a big undercut on the top strategy, which most of the AI are running. Let's actually check in a minute and see on Race Director what the AI are doing. Uh, but if they are going to start on hards, and it looks like the majority, or about half the field are, then it will be a big undercut. Even those on mediums will be stretching quite far to get to the point where they need to get hard to the end. So uh, we're going to have a good few laps there on fresh soft compound tires in the mid part of the race where we're going to be like three seconds a lap faster than the AI. I'm not even exaggerating. And that's going to be able to enable us to get Slipstream and Toe off the leaders. Here we go then. The formation lap is underway and the track temperature looks warm. That may or may not play into some of the team's hands in today's race. And in that midpoint of the race, when we get Slipstream DRS off of the leaders, we'll get dragged away further from those behind us. I think this is going to be a great strat. It did work for us in Spain, albeit with a safety car influence involved, but I don't even think we need safety cars today to make this work. This is going to be a big strategy. It's only a short pit stop loss around here in Canada. Let's see if we can make it work. 15th place on the grid, Max Verstappen in 13th. Five red lights, and we are underway for my best start on F123. Four, five, six cars overtaken in a turn one. That is absolutely unbelievable, that start that we just got. I'm going to have to get my notepad out and watch that replay multiple times over just to see what I did there, because that was insane. So many cars jumped off the line. People are going to think I jumped the start. Either way, we are absolutely flying in this race, and we're going to take that upwards momentum with us into the top seven before this first lap is even halfway done. That is absolutely unbelievable, that start from us there. Still, 110 AI, no assists, simulation damage. This is as hard as it gets without doing, you know, cockpit cam. But, you know, who can be asked to watch cockpit cam gameplay? Sorry, Dirk. Anyway, lap two, and we're in the slipstream of Norris. DRS not enabled at this point. Important for me to get the left-hand side here because it pushes Norris out of the slipstream and it puts us in it. Late break around the outside. And that is a top six scenario for us now. Only the big boys now ahead of us, if you exclude Fernando Alonso uh, in the Aston Martin. Race control have enabled DRS now. So the overtakes now will come in even, even more of a flurry. So we'll see if we can just leapfrog everyone with DRS. It'll be interesting to see how it works with uh, those ahead also getting DRS as well. So if we can somehow isolate Russell or get him before... He gets DRS on Alonso. That'll make our job a lot easier. He's on the hard compound tires, so early doors. We should have a, a pretty sizable advantage on him. 30% battery left. Looking up the inside into the last chicane, and he leaves the space. Big dive bomb from us, and uh, we make that work. Not really a two-line corner there, so if you uh, try and contest a position into the last chicane, you're going to lose a lot of time, and, and George Russell did just that, unfortunately for him. We break DRS to the Mercedes, Slipstream range and DRS range of Alonso uh, for us. So we're just getting dragged along towards him and Leclerc at this stage. But uh, four laps in, tire wear hasn't been kind to us. I'm not going to lie. I think with that rapid start, I got a bit excited with uh, the right foot. And uh, I, I overexcited the rear tires a little bit. Uh, it, it's a little bit of wheel spin, a little bit of... Uh, sliding on the way into corners just I was a bit too enthusiastic and as such the tire wear on the first lap was was pretty crazy and now even even now on lap five we're feeling the effect of the rear tires starting to go a little bit or just that excessive wear compared to the front so the balance of the car is you can see it right there on corner exit so oversteer as we try and get on the power we're still moving forward we still have great pace but the car is got too much rotation. Never thought I'd say that, but we have too much rotation. It is, uh, it's a bit of a problem. So I'm going to have to rein that in a little bit. Even there, mid-corner, bit of a snap halfway through, which was not great. So uh, at this point, we're, we're leapfrogging Alonso, hoping to tag on to the next group of cars ahead. Leclerc is next, uh, just about in DRS range, but we want to confirm that as uh, we're yeeting the tyres. 
for all that they're worth to hopefully get the RS here. On the power, nice and early. Low on battery as well. And there we go. We just couple onto the back of Charles Leclerc like a horse and carriage. We are getting dragged along like a wagon in this race. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'd even say now that the mediums aren't so great compared to the hards. Tire wear comes at you quickly on this game. But uh, we've certainly made the most of these tires. 15th place to 4th in uh, only a handful of laps. It has been absolutely crazy. Now, we're kind of just taking stock of where we're at at this stage. Oh, bad exit for Leclerc there. I don't really want to overtake him because he's got better pace than us. So we're actually going to settle in behind. We're going to lift and coast just in case the fuel burn is bad. We uh, nearly ran out of fuel. We were in danger running out of fuel in Create the Series. But uh, I think we should be okay. First warning of the Grand Prix. Three of those. Three second time penalty. But um, yeah, we're settling in behind Leclerc at this stage. Or we have been for the last few laps. I think now we're actually going for it on Leclerc. This is like three laps later. Uh, we realize that we actually have a bit of pace on him. He tries to give us a big squeeze into the final chicane. And uh, he actually ends up hurting himself as there was absolutely no room for us to get through side by side. Both compromised on exit. Him more so. Lost over a second. And uh, Leclerc has lost DRS to us. So now it is us versus Carlos Sainz for P2 in this Canadian Grand Prix. Those couple of laps where I sat behind Leclerc were absolutely crucial. I went, I put the brake bias forward to look after the rear tires a little bit. I charged up the battery. And um, I think it's kind of meant that my, my tires have maybe got a second life in this stint. So we're now trying to utilize these tires as much as we can before we're thinking about a pit stop. Lap 12 is when we're scheduled to come in, but I might actually extend the stints a little bit, especially now that we're in the slipstream and DRS of science. Uh, we can basically just have his pace without, you know, compromising our stints. We, it's the best of both worlds. We're extending our medium stints and uh, lessening the load on the softs that are incoming in a few laps time. So uh, we're gonna charge a bit more battery, uh, chill the tires a little bit more. Maybe we'll stay out to like lap 14. We're getting called in now for our pit stop to softs. But yeah, we're going to extend this a little bit and, and just make it a lot easier on the softs later on in the race. Um, this will definitely make the, the overall race time a lot better. We're also trying to extend the gap to this group of cars for P17, 16, 15-ish. And uh, yeah, my teammate is, is head of the choo-choo train at this stage. So if we can somehow find the gap to emerge out of our teammate in that clear air we'll be setting ourselves up very well for the back end of the race and here we go in we go for our first stop of the grand prix onto the softs and i just pray that we have the gap because the game was telling me rejoin position was 19th and 19th is smack bang in the middle of that train where we don't want to be onto the softs we go good pit stop this time 2.4 seconds, rejoining on the soft, and I think we're going to easily rejoin ahead of our teammate, Liam Lawson. Thank you so much, teammates, for looking after me, holding back the back markers, allowing me to flourish. Away we go then, on the soft compound tyres, and for these final 20 laps, now we can go full attack mode for the rest of this race. Up the inside, straight away, on Valtteri Bottas, had so much momentum from the pit lane, these guys have old medium tyres and they are struggling to uh, get to their recommended pit window. Just like in Creator Series, I was like two seconds lap slower at this stage of the race compared to people on new softs. Like Tom was one of them. And we're just doing a Tom in this race. We're just absolutely flying past everyone on old tyres who are struggling to keep their rear tyres in check. Uh, they've got absolutely no traction. Their braking zones are elongated. Sonoda... Trying to put up a big defense. In the end, it uh, is, goes to no avail. We're not even racing him at this point. We, we've got such a tire advantage that there's absolutely no point in, in putting up a fight. We are well clear of the midfield runners. And actually, I, I, I think if things go our way, we'll probably be on for a top five. If things go our way, we have to overtake a lot of cars. And then we have to hope that the tire drop-off is equally as bad on the hards for the leaders. Uh, that's the unknown at this stage. I know that we're going to be quick, but how quick are the AI going to be uh, towards the uh, dying stages of this race? Anyway, first flying lap, 11-6. We're going 
three seconds of that faster than what we were before on our mediums. Yeah, absolutely nuts. We are certainly undercutting our way into the top three battle uh, once they all make their pit stops. I might actually have the lead of the Grand Prix once Sergio Perez boxes from the lead. Up the inside we go on Max Verstappen, and that is P10 in this race. Hamilton next. I don't really want to sit and chill for too long in this train while we've got this tyre advantage. Having to uh, bide our time for now. That's not really an overtaking corner. So we're going to uh, wait for our moment. And I think that moment is coming up the inside into this hairpin. We're going to go up the inside. Hamilton really defending that hard. He moved over so many times. And we lean on the back of Stroll's car. Somehow no damage on our front wing. Not once, but twice there. A little bit of contact again. DRS. And we fly past the Aston Martin driver. Do we? His top end speed is actually very good. His drag reduction... Uh, seemingly better than the power of our engine at the back end of that straight. But we get away with it, P7. Next up is Oscar Piastri in P6. And uh, you can just see us creep into shots as we enter the braking zone. So we are absolutely flying at this stage. It's, it feels like I'm not running the same spec of car as these guys. It, it, three seconds of lap difference is absolutely brutal and I, I I implore you again this is 110 AI as hard as it gets the tires this year are just absolutely unbelievable there's uh, very little words to describe the feeling of being on new tires on this game and then especially when you compare it to people on old tires it's um, it, it's crazy what the difference is Meanwhile, Russell still hasn't made his pit stop. Do you remember only a few laps ago, we were racing this guy for position. Now, we've made up that pit stop to a hard runner. That's how effective the two-stop is, guys. We might actually be in the running for the win in this Canadian Grand Prix. Up the inside we go on Russell. And now the Ferraris, and we definitely were battling before we made our pit stop. We're only a few seconds up the road before they just made their stop. But now, this phase of the race is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, they've now got the new tyres and I'll be able to see what their pace is like relative to my old, okay. older soft compound tyres. Perez rejoined about four seconds behind me on his fresh hard compound tyres. And he's now catching me. Not as drastically as I was catching him. Uh, he's gaining me by about a second a lap. This is an Ast Aston... Martin rival from last year. Nice save for me there. Uh, Guan Yu Zhou retiring from the race. Uh, no safety car, unfortunately. That would have been perfect timing for us because 10 laps to go in the race. Our softs do about 10 laps in terms of their useful life, and then we are getting rid of them. So I think we're going to box now. We extended this stint by one lap longer than what I anticipated as well. So this final stint here is going to be super short meaning that I don't think we're going to get any tyre drop-off at all. So we should be able to be quicker than everyone for the rest of the race. That's what we've set ourselves up for here with the extended first stint, the extended second stint, and now we can just absolutely fly. Ferraris, only about 8, 9, 10 seconds up the road. We're going to rejoin P6. So we've made some definite gains there. The last time we came out of the pit lane in the last stint, we came out P13, so yeah, we're, we're looking good in this race. We are gravitating towards the front. I think it's definitely helped by the fact we have pace. Like, we, we definitely have pace. We got to P3 on merit, uh, even before the tyre strategy was factored into it. And now we have great tyres compared to everyone else on uh, older mediums or older hards. So now we are just going full send. Every lap is a qualifying lap now at this point. We're going to see if we can beat our previous fastest lap. No one has actually managed to beat our fastest lap at this stage of a 1 minute 11.6, but I'd imagine Sergio Perez will be one to challenge that in the dying laps of this race once he charges up his battery and sees if he can have a have a big go in the last couple of laps. So it'll be crucial for us to uh, move that marker on. Unfortunately, only moved it on by a tenth in this second stint, so... We weren't as well optimized to uh, to go for the fastest lap. We haven't had as much battery as what we did last stint. Uh, we've been using our battery just for pure overtakes to, to get moves done efficiently without having to battle too much. So, um, yeah, the focus is really just 
clawing back in as much track position as we can and claw it back quickly. We are straight up the inside of Fernando Alonso. Good move that because we get DRS on the claw and we also dispatch Alonso at the same time. If that was a one-on-one -on -one battle, I don't think I would have went for that move at that corner because I wanted the DRS. Anyway, hairpin time and uh, it is... An unbelievably fun time with new tyres. The traction is absolutely insane. It's so nice. So nice to have better traction than the AI for a change. F122. All the time. The AI would always have better traction. And now it's nice to have the shoe on the other foot. P3 in this Canadian Grand Prix. A couple of overtakes there and it's an 11.7. So not quite uh, moving on that marker a little bit further in terms of the fastest lap. This lap that I'm doing right here is probably the best lap that I did all race. But unfortunately, the tires have, have seen their, their like new tire shine. They're, they're, they're past their best at this point. 11.5, despite using more battery and actually it being a better lap, the tires just were a little bit past their best at this point. Either way, we're in the DRS now of Carlos Sainz. We're going to hopefully overtake him fairly swiftly. Four laps to re remaining in the Grand Prix. And I actually think we could probably win this race because we're still... Catching Sergio Perez by a second and a half, maybe two seconds a lap at this stage. Yellow flag at the last chicane. And that has brought out a safety car. No, it's a red flag. Red flag has been deployed in the final four laps of this Canadian Grand Prix. And actually, that has probably ended our chances or diminished our chances of winning this race. Hear me out here. I had a big advantage. A big advantage before. And now that advantage is gone because everyone else has fresh tires now. Five red lights. And away we go for the restart of this Canadian Grand Prix. Ferrari doing Ferrari things and putting their tires on mediums for a two-lap sprint to the end. So we easily get Leclerc and Sainz off the line. Straight up in the P2. However, yeah, I, I think we had a great chance of winning the race before because uh, we had soft tyres compared to old hards for Sergio Perez. Now he has fresh softs to uh, absolutely blitz forward in this race. I didn't have my battery fully saved up as well. Your battery marker gets, gets saved from where the red flag got announced to uh, the start of the race. I didn't have much battery. Maybe, maybe Perez has a bit more battery than I do, so he's absolutely flying and deploying all of that battery off this start, trying to break outside of a second, because we will get DRS on the last lap of the Grand Prix. But I've now got to try and beat a Red Bull in a straight-up fight, a 1v1 in a, in a three-lap sprint. So this is going to be tricky. we just got to weather the storm. That's our second warning for track limits in this race. Hopefully now Sergio has burn through most of his battery and and we have something to fight with in these last two laps we are making inroads this lap here has been better than the first one we are reeling him in but i'm not sure how much pace we're going to have we're going to try and slipstream heading into the final chicane no drs just yet i've used up all my battery to try and have a little go into the last chicane it didn't work that perez mobile is very quick in a straight line fastest up of the grand prix thankfully for us that was also a concern someone else might have been able to steal our fastest lap off of us but thankfully we moved on the market quite a bit 10 9 for us there that's that's like qualifying pace at this stage that is absolutely nuts flashing on the battery it is the last lap of this canadian grand prix sergio perez versus benjamin daly in his own marduk motorsport powered car by ferrari and uh, we finally Finally get some DRS on this guy, but we are very low on battery. 9%. 9% is not much to work with when uh, you're faced up against the Red Bull in a straight-up fight on the same tyres. Into the hairpin for the last time. I'm just praying that this exit sticks with minimal wheel spin. It looks like it was okay, but that is a big gap to leave to a Red Bull on a DRS straight. Over five tenths is Sergio Perez ahead. We're going to have to hope for a miracle run out of this last chicane. Perez is absolutely flashing on the battery. A bad exit, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Perez holds on. That's it for another magnificent Canadian Grand Prix. And they've hung on to take a sublime victory here today. So Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? 
I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. Oh man, I can't believe it. We gave that everything in this race, but ultimately Sergio Perez wins the Canadian Grand Prix. It's a very abrupt ending to the race. Like we went straight to a cutscene. Uh, there was no wind down. There was no uh, message from the engineer or anything. Just just straight into the cutscenes. I don't know if that was a, a red flag thing or not, but either way, the result stands. P2. Um, I, that red flag glitch, uh, which is a thing on F1 and 23, probably meant we weren't going to win the race anyway because uh, when you have a red flag, it takes into total accounts the, the, the total race time. And because I was behind Perez by... It was four seconds I was behind Perez by. Uh, I, it meant that it, if I was to win the race, I would have had to have beaten Perez by over four seconds in this race. Uh, but the gap says 12. The, the gap was never 12 seconds when the red flag came out. But uh, I digress. Thankfully, uh, the, the race result for me wasn't, wasn't affected in the end. I would have been absolutely raging if I would have... Uh, won the race and then had it stripped away from me from a glitch so uh yeah hopefully that is that is going to be fixed it will be addressed in the next patch i i hear i i believe so yeah look forward to that but um yeah i think as soon as the red flag came out that was our that was our chance of winning the race out the window would have really loved to have seen what would have happened had there been green flag running to the end because i really think we had the pace on those guys we would have got the drs on the ferrari uh that would have earned us like a second second and a half in in our quest to get sergio perez on those two drs straights and then from there it would have been just me trying to to squeeze the most out of those tires in the dying laps i, I really backed myself to uh to actually get that win but still though we had a very exciting ending and uh I hope you're entertained. Either way, I'm uh, shopping for teammates uh, halfway through this season. We we do have to think about contracts because um, our teammate Liam Lawson is out of contract in 21 days time. So uh, he's, his days are numbered. He's only got one or two races remaining. And uh, we have to think about a replacement. We have to save up for a replacement driver. To, uh, to fill that second driver role. I've never been more no, more sure in my life about firing a teammate. It has been comprehensively bad for Liam Lawson in this car. Whatever reason, it's just not worked out. His pace has been atrocious. So we're going to go in another direction. Let me know what that direction should be. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you need to see plenty more F1 23 content. Uh, fairly soon, I'm going to have a ranked video up. I want to do some uh, F1 World stuff. I'm very excited to try that. Uh, we've got Creator Series coming up on the weekend. Uh, follow me on Twitch if you guys want to see that. Uh, link in the description to my other socials if you want to check it out. But um, yeah, I, I do a lot of Twitch streaming these days. So if you want to see some content live as it happens then uh, that is the place to be. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Thank you for making it this far. You guys are absolute legends. That was probably my favorite move of the race. That one on Hamilton. I think we did very lucky to avoid damage. Until the next one, the Austrian Grand Prix. I'll see you next time.